Hey there. Okay, so there's a couple of things I really like about this little painting and a couple of things I really don't. Um, and I'm going to address those in this video. Uh, one of the things that I really don't like is that this arm doesn't appear to be articulated enough to do things like wrap <coughs> around. Sorry about that. Wrap around and uh, grab the teddy bear. Okay, so this arm's clearly bent around in front of him. But this arm doesn't look like he can do that. So I'm going to redo this arm so that this makes sense. The other thing is that uh, the teddy bear looks really nice. The robot looks really nice. I was very proud of the effect of the reflections and everything that I got here, but they look pasted together because there's no shadow. This bear should definitely be casting a shadow right here, which would connect him and ground him to the robot and make him look like he's a part of the same picture. This is all nicely painted, rather thickly painted, and it's varnished, and so, sandpaper. Ah, and we're gonna see what happens. Might just ruin it, who knows. But, uh, get a little sandpaper here. Get that stuff off of there. I mostly have to remove the varnish. I can paint over the paint. But any additional paint is not gonna stick to the varnish. So I've gotta go even a little bit beyond on the arm so that I can paint, you know, freely and, and uh, get whatever I need. Because uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, so there's going to be details there. And uh, wiping that off with a rag just makes a lot of dust. There, I've got to do a little bit more up here in his shoulder joint. paint thick sometimes. All right, this part kind of kills me. I don't want to do it, but I've got to do it. Gotta get in there and get that off. So I can paint some shadow in there. For the paint, we'll see what happens. So there's a couple things I'm going to do right here, uh, kind of on the fly. I'm going to I'm going to give the robot a sort of a bendy arm, like uh, like the Lost in Space robot had. Uh, so that would kind of explain how he can move that way. I'm not an engineer, so I can't really engineer a, a workable mechanical arm. Maybe why I don't draw that much science fiction. Um, and then we're just going to make up a, yeah, something like this, but uh, India ink pen. do a lot of things with it. It won't paint, it won't uh, adhere over a glossy surface, but it'll adhere over a, a matte surface. So, that's enough for me to go by for a little bit. have a Lizarin Crimson, uh, which is a very dark, deep red. If you painted it right on a white surface, it might look kind of raspberry red. Um, 
but it's very deep and it's good for shadows that need a reddish color. Not quite dark enough. So I'm mixing it with a little Payne's Gray, which is also very transparent. Kind of a bluish, very dark gray. It's almost black looking if you just squirt out a glob, uh, but very transparent. So it makes perfect shadow paint also. I'm going to put a lot of that mixture in here to kind of fix up all the scuffing we did with some color. Having dropped his shadow across this piece right here, that's higher up than over here. So there couldn't be shadow up here. We're going to have to do something else there. A little darker, not getting very dark. Then without even bothering to clean my brush, I went in, picked up a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. Made myself a nice bluish gray. That's going to require some back and forthing, but that's getting me going. If you notice me looking up there a couple times, it's because I've got a little Lost in Space robot sitting on my shelf up there, and so I'm kind of using him for a model. And uh, it's going to take some back and forth. I'm going to get some more Payne's Gray, make the shadows of these little uh, striations, and then, then I'm going to get some yellow and kind of carve my way in here um, to uh, round that out. So, a little bit of this and that, but I'm already liking this better. I think it looks better. And uh, so that's it.